Hallo und herzlich willkommen. Mein Name ist Christiane Wirz. Ich bin Coach und Autorin aus Köln und weiß, wie sich etwas aus Krisen machen lässt. Heute ähm, sind wir mit den Bahamas verbunden. Und zwar begrüße ich heute einen Menschen, den ich im Zusammenhang mit Neurodiversität kennengelernt habe. Er heißt Jason Stiles. Jason Stiles ist ähm, Doktorand und außerdem Professor und das wird er uns gleich auf Englisch erklären. Und er hat einen zweifachen Weg hinter sich und zwar ähm, ist es zum einen so, dass er selbst Mental Health Probleme hatte und zum anderen sich selbst gedacht hat, er möchte mit diesem Thema was anfangen und möchte das wissenschaftlich vertiefen und auch mit diesem Thema arbeiten. Und das besprechen wir jetzt gleich auf Englisch, also sowohl was seinen persönlichen Werdegang betrifft, als auch wie er dazu gekommen ist, das jetzt wirklich umzusetzen und aus seinen persönlichen Krisen sein Glück zu erarbeiten und zu schaffen und auch seine Erfahrungen sozusagen mit anderen Menschen zu teilen und etwas draus zu machen aus seinen Krisen. Ich begrüße Jason Stiles. Jason, hello to the Bahamas. I just introduced you and uh, said that you are a PhD candidate at which university? Can you please um, uh, explain it? Uh, explain it. Uh, <laughs> Christian, um, worth. I really appreciate you um, inviting me today on the podcast. Um, I'm currently at the university at well. I work at the University of the Bahamas. However, I'm a PhD candidate pursuing my PhD at Regent University that is located in Virginia Beach um, in the United States. So I'm actually coming to the end. I'm in my dissertation phase and I'm actually collecting data. So I'm soon going to be possibly finishing a month. So I'm looking forward for that. Jason, this really sounds interesting. I, I have heard that you have uh, different issues that you're working on. I mean, you're a professor at the University of the Bahamas yes. and, uh, and a PhD candidate, and you have different uh, subjects that you're working on. I mean, you're interested in e economy, you're interested in philosophy, you're interested in mental health uh, phenomenon. Can you please uh, make it a little bit more specific? I mean, like... Uh, PhD is dealing with which subject and you are teaching as a professor in exactly what? Okay. Well, you know, it all started back with, I'm, I'm going to start off with my, my bachelor's. All right. My bachelor's, I actually was pursuing to become a doctor, a medical doctor. However, I hadn't fallen in love with um, philosophy and learning about the various different perspectives, um, the isms, the theories, and so on. And I was like, wow, this is how individuals look at certain things. And then I was like, okay, let me get into this. So another aspect of that, I started learning more about global leadership and how different cultures view certain things, how different religions view certain things. Like I've learned about Marxism, functionalism, um, nihilism, and, and so on. These things I'm learning about. And I'm like, wow, this is a different perspective. And eventually, once I've learned, I actually interned at the United Nations for a few weeks and actually went into UNESCO in Italy. And I also went to France. So that opportunity, learning about different philosophies, various perspectives and cultures and so on, actually helped me understand of why people look from a certain perspective and so on. Now, eventually, once I graduated from then, I pursue a master's in management, which is a science of management, which I learned about project management and so on in the various aspects of management, because I noticed my strength was more into dealing with people. And, you know, I'm a people's person. I'm an extrovert. I love to help and empower others. I don't like to see other individuals uh, struggling and so on. I mean, in life, it's like you have to help other individuals to get to where they need to be, which that ended up leading me into my PhD. Now, which my PhD is in organizational leadership and the leadership aspect, you know, leadership is important in all aspects. Okay. And 
my concentration with the organizational leadership is human resource development, which is the training and development. It's all about the mindset and then helping individuals um, on an individual base, which would later trickle down into a group learning or team learning, which will also affect the organization on a holistic scale. So I'm all about solutions and I'm, I'm big on solution oriented and I know the world is becoming complex. So I was like, you know what? Leadership is something that is important. It is the forefront for various cultures. And without culture, there's no leadership. Without leadership, there's no culture. So vice versa. Um, you know, in my country where I'm at right now, currently reside in the Bahamas, I currently lecture in those capacities in leadership, human resource management, management, organizational behavior, organizational design theory. And I've noticed that, you know, I'm passionate about change, especially being a thought leader for the future and the way currently what's happening now with COVID. And I noticed that um, I've had my challenges as a learner and an educator also, and I found myself to be a neurodiverse individual. Now, what is neurodiversity or what is neurodiverse? I see things from a difference, from a different perspective. I have a learning disability. However, I did not utilize, I did not utilize that as an excuse, but I take it, I ran with it. I made sure, I said, you know what? Yes, I'm different, but I don't see things from a, I don't see things as, as other individuals. So, Jason, Jason, may I interrupt you? I mean, go ahead. you say that you have a different perspective, that you see things from a neuro, uh, that, I mean, maybe everybody has a neurodiverse view, but some people don't know it. But what you told me about you sounds like somebody who has really, I mean, disruptive ideas and who is really intelligent. So how can you tell me or the people who are listening to this podcast that there is something wrong with you or there is something different with you? What is it that some people think, I mean, you said you have learning disabilities. How can you have learning disabilities if you have learned all the things that you said? I mean, like, being a professor and doing your PhD in, I don't know what, philosophy and stuff. I mean, like, how can these things come together? I mean, maybe you're right that you have learning disabilities, but how can you translate that in simple words? Well, you know, as, as I mentioned, you know, um, with the whole disabilities, it's still a, a loaded topic because it could be physical or psychological, right? And I'm speaking from a psychological aspect. Uh, one that I know of and I've been diagnosed auditory processing of written integration. And it's, it's like having it in your head and you can't write it on the paper. Another oh. one is ADHD. Mm -hmm. ADHD, I'm always on a hundred. However, I take that energy on Espanol, say energia, and I focus that and I, I channel it to my productivity. Now, mm -hmm. as I mentioned earlier, learning about it, coming from a background, I'm from a, an, an island, Exuma. Mm -hmm. We don't know what these things are because if you are having challenges learning, they will label you as you are retarded, You're dumb, you're stupid, but they're not educated of knowing what is happening. Now, myself, I knew I was different. But certain things that interest me might not interest other individuals. But mm -hmm. the difference between myself and other individuals is I never gave up. You know you're different. You take that, you live with that but you also find accommodations which is going to assist you. You align yourself in positions and certain, and, you know, in certain aspects in your life so you will not be at the other end of the spectrum where you're going to continue to have challenges. Yes, you're going to have challenges, but you got to embrace them and you got to learn from it. Mm -hmm. But Jason, you know, like, um, couldn't it be that it might be that from um, a Western average viewpoint, right. there might be something 
different with you or with me, okay? Okay. So, okay. but on the other hand, couldn't it be that anyway, nobody really fits in this Western average thing? So it might just be that you are just the one who expresses that a little bit earlier. And if some people really honestly look into themselves, they realize that in whatever way, everybody is different in a way. Yes, indeed. Everyone is different in a way. And you cannot find no peas in the same pod. Um, and it's interesting because we are in a, an environment. I'm, I'm going to speak from the Bahamas aspect. We are in a collectivist environment, whereas in, we're in groups, right? And comparison, as in, I compare you to someone else. Can you see how that person is doing? Why can't you be like that person? We haven't tapped into that. We stay, we want to imitate others, but not focusing on our abilities or our skills, not knowing what we have can also be utilized and be tweaked mm -hmm. in order to, you know, become successful or that skill to take you to the next level. And, you know, that comes with self-confidence too. You know, you, as you grow, as you go through the different, you know, nuances in life, you're going to learn. And either you're going to, focus on the challenges and say, you know what, let me embrace these and keep it moving. Or are you going to take a pity party, a pity party as in, Oh, boo hoo. I'm this, I'm that. I can't do this. You know, no, it's all about practice. You got to keep doing it. You got to keep exercising. You know, um, when it comes to patients, you don't just born with patients. You have to exercise the patients. So you got to recalibrate rewired your whole mental capacity does it takes time yes you might need somebody who's instrumental as in a mentor to help you get to where you need to be um some individuals might need medication which everything has some type of consequences or outcome so uh that's something we have to take a look at more you know and, and neurodiverse individuals are very creative they are very innovative Mm -hmm. they are making a wave in the technology area. L let me give you an example. Um, Mozart had mm -hmm. some type of disability. Mm -hmm. Charles Swa have some type of disability. Uh, Richard Branson, who is the CEO of Virgin Mobile, have a learning disability. Mm -hmm. Okay. My VP of HR had dyslexia. Mm -hmm. And I could go on and on. Henry Ford, Steve Jobs of Apple, mm -hmm. you know, they, they embraced it. You know, why can't we do the same? Because this is the same saying, an old saying. If you put a fish in a sandbox, it's not going anywhere. <laughs> okay? Mm -hmm. It's not going to go anywhere. It's going to stay stagnant. And so on. But imagine if you put a neurodiverse talent, mm -hmm. an individual, mm -hmm. say that same individual metaphorically is the fish. You put them in the stream, the stream and you know what's going to happen in that lake? They're going to swim. They're going to swim mm -hmm. because you put them in the right position. You put them in the right environment. You put them in the right organizational culture. Mm -hmm. and you know what's going to happen? Mm -hmm productivity is going to happen yeah. and it's going to trickle and it's going to expand. But we have not grasped that idea yet in our country, in the Bahamas, which I'm a big advocate for, no accommodations in HR, which I've done research and I found out data, how HR is not even previewed to what's happening. And especially in the 21st century, the constant changing, the VUCA environment, the volatility, the uncertainty, the complexity, the ambiguity is currently happening in this country. Mm -hmm. So I don't want to continue to run on, but I'm just very passionate about it because there are opportunities and there are a lot of opportunities. Jason, it sounds great to me because I think... My approach is a little bit like, um, first you have to acknowledge the values of that, 
there might be some challenges, but first you have to acknowledge um, the values of neurodiverse um, whatever thinking and being, and you have to put teams together in the right way. I mean, in a way, you have been talking about the fishes, you know, like maybe you, uh, the fishes in the sea or the fishes in a, in, a, in a river or the fishes in a lake, but there could be different fishes, you know, like um, there could be a shark, there could be a whale, there could be, uh, I don't know, whatever, you know, a goldfish and, um, and there could be a team, you know. Indeed, and that's diversity too. And all of them are wired differently. And it's interesting you said that because that could be a metaphor right there when it comes to HR, you know, mm. getting everybody to work together mm. on the same page. That's an organizational culture and it's that's a culture on itself. The various fish you say could be a shark, could be a, this type of fish, could be a coral, all mm. right? Mm -hmm. um, you know, because it's, it could be a complex adaptive system. Whereas everybody do their part. You're, you're diverse. So let, let's get it. Let's put it together. Let's interconnect and let's mm -hmm. move forward. Mm -hmm. You know, and the point is, it's the way you look at things. If you think the white shark is just a very bad beast, you know. Right. Okay, it's frightening. But if you think that the white shark kills anyway those who, I don't know, he's a kind of let's say, a kind of police and a kind of uh, whatever. Um, maybe sometimes they need to, the, the fishes need to have a shark, you know, or some being who is completely alert, completely in the moment, completely um, could be also sometimes aggressive. But you also have the whale, you know. You have the whale who has this incredible uh, communication system, you know, like uh, we, we just don't know what they do have. And maybe the whale even is communicating with the shark. We don't know that. Maybe he, do, right. he does that, you know. And all the other fishes. So then there might be a really balanced out system that we can take as an example for, you know, for different uh, positions in a team. Right, right. And HR have to, and it's interesting you said that, if I look at it from an HR perspective, a human resource perspective, you don't know who you're going to hire. You don't know who is who. Mm -hmm. You don't know who's talented. You don't know who's challenging when it comes to, you know, could have a, who could be neurodiversity. But as an HR professional, as a practitioner, you have to put together a team of experts, mm -hmm. diverse individuals who can move the organization to the next level. So you could have that shark, you could have that whale, you could have those snappers, you could have those flying fish and so on. All right. But this is where diversity and inclusion comes into play because every one of those individuals who are neurodiverse mm -hmm. could work together. Mm -hmm. so that is so important because yeah we might all have differences but when it comes to working together we can all contribute something mm -hmm. that could be detrimental mm -hmm. that could be something that is innovative mm -hmm. you know and and another thing it would not be group thinking where everybody's saying yes 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 mm -hmm. you don't want group think Mm -hmm. That's that's lack of productivity. That's social loafing. Mm -hmm. You want to have a high performance team on a high performance team or group because now you have complexity, mm -hmm. unprogrammed decision making mm -hmm. from various individuals because every one of those selected different individuals, they're individuals, first of all. Mm -hmm. They are contributing in their own right. Mm -hmm. They are giving ideas, concepts, and details in their own right. So we have to take note of that. Mm -hmm. We have to understand that as HR professionals. Mm -hmm. So, but the team is consisting of everybody in your universe. Right. You know, the, the one could be a little bit more on the autism spectrum, on the psychosis spectrum, on the HDHD. <laughs> ADA, 
ADHD. ADHD. Okay. okay. Spectrum, you know. But everybody has a certain, you know, whatever polarity, some more yeah. and some less. So I just wanted to emphasize that nobody is excluded. You know, it's not that somebody with psychosis is the superhero or this some or somebody with the uh, ADHD is this and what i really think is that on the other hand if you're working in a group and you're really right. respecting you know the talents of the other one then you might get a little bit of the other one you know like um, this is my experience you know when i have been together for example with uh, usually i'm not very detailed Right. But I'm, for example, the autism people are a little bit more detailed. When I'm together right. with them, right. I'm getting more detailed and they're getting more broad. <laughs> right. And this is the feeling I have. Maybe I'm wrong, but, but this is, you know, something that, what is really, you know, inspiring in a group. Right. And it's interesting you said that, Christian, because, you know, there is no one correct way of perceiving the world. And the individuals within it. And, you know, with the whole neurodiversity, there's a plethora. You got autism, um, Tourette's, mm -hmm. you have dyscalculia, ADHD, um, autistic spectrum, um, on the spectrum, autism and all that. And as you mentioned, they see things from a different perspective because there might be something I might miss and Christian might pick up. But there might be something I might miss, Christian might miss, but somebody else who might be on a autistic spectrum might pick up. Or somebody else who have Tourette's might pick up. Or somebody else who have dyscalculia might pick up. And this is what I'm talking about. Mm -hmm. Inclusivity, mm -hmm. inclusion mm -hmm. is something that is needed because this is where the minds are at. They're geniuses in their own right. Mm -hmm. We cannot cast people, uh, outcast individuals who are different. Why? You know, they, it, it, it's such a waste, you know, it, and it's it, such a waste of money. I mean, if, if we're talking about money, money, you know, yeah, I, it's just a weight of values, human resources, emotions, uh, uh, everything. Everything is a waste of human resources and human resources the most important department and organizations because they are the individuals who are supposed to retain, recruit, and to motivate, okay? But now we are moving more into diverse talent. And in Europe, neurodiversity is growing. In the United States, it's still in the backstages. It's getting there, but it's taking time. So what are we going to do? How are we going to do this? And what are the necessary, uh, what are the resources that are needed mm -hmm. in order to help this individual mm -hmm. in their career development, mm -hmm. in their personal development, mm -hmm. and overall their life development, their spiritual well-being? Mm -hmm. All right? Because all that stuff is a part. That's a web. That's interconnected. You cannot separate that. You cannot. Yeah, that's true. Jason, do you want to, to tell us a little bit about your personal story? Just some little pieces. Okay. Um, just a personal story. I, as I mentioned, I'm originally from Exuma, Bahamas. It's a rural island. Not much development. Um, I grew up on, you know, kind of a farm. I'm the last of, of nine siblings. My parents are 85. My, my dad is 85 and my mom is 77. And they're still living now. Um, I got an opportunity. I was, I was in school, a private school called St. Andrews. And it seems the, the teachers were having a problem with me. They like, oh, we can't concentrate. I was hyper and so on. And I remember my first time, they took me to the doctor and they prescribed me Ritalin. Mm. Ritalin. I just uh, repeat that for the German Ritalin. This is prescribed here in, in, in Europe too. Okay. They prescribed me, there was in the Bahamas, they prescribed me Ritalin. Mm. And 
to be honest with you, I didn't know, but I always felt like, okay, this is concentrating and so on. But then after a few weeks, I stopped taking it. Mm-hmm. And I flushed it down the toilet. Oh. And I was like, you know what? No, this is not me. Mm-hmm. So this is around grade seven, six, seven, and so on. Um, I ended up transferring to another school, which was um, in another island. And I was not focusing. Now, I I knew to work. I was correcting the teacher and, and so on. I was getting into mischief and so on. But I was not focusing on my work. I got suspended a few times and so on. I'm um, just being mischievous. And eventually, I got an opportunity to go to a particular school. Uh, my parents used to work for some wealthy family. And they offered to, to school me in the United States. It was a boarding school. I didn't know what type of boarding school it was, but it was a particular boarding school. It was called Vanguard. Um, They focus on more individual learning, smaller classrooms, and you get assessed based off your IQ and so on, and you get accepted in. When I got accepted, I was was practically blank, didn't know what I was getting myself into. However, I knew it was an opportunity, so... I learn more about myself, learn about how I learn, learn about um, how to learn as in taking in information. And I had a more one-on-one basis. The ratio for the classroom, for the, for the educator or the teacher was seven to one. So I had more personal time. This assisted me mm-hmm. of becoming who I am today, mm-hmm. finding out what areas I need to work on. And those areas I needed to work on, I took those levels to a proficient level. So I will be able to compete in other areas. And, um, you know, this school, and I'm going to be honest with you, this school is $40,000 a year in the U.S. Okay? And this was an opportunity, whereas I learned how to not just engage and speak with other individuals, not feeling different, knowing what you have, not using your disability as an excuse, but as knowing that, acknowledging it and making a difference. Mm -hmm. So through those years, I've learned how to become a team player, playing basketball, playing sports, Mm -hmm. learning how to speak, different engagements and so on, Mm -hmm. traveling. And this helped molded myself into going into the university which I obtained my bachelor's, my master's, and currently my PhD. Mm -hmm. You know, one thing I understand is I have to work three times as hard as other individuals Mm -hmm. because people don't understand what I go through. If I read something, I will read it a million times, but I'm going to make sure, understand, I'm going to take that. I'm going to dissect it. You might look at it differently. You might learn quickly. It It depends on the individual. And you know what? I made it this far, Christiana, without certain accommodations because I put God in front Mm -hmm. and I persevere and I I, I move forward with that grit. Didn't want to give up. Mm -hmm. You know, people look at you like you're, oh, you're you're dumb, you're stupid because you you, you have challenges in life. Why not just sit back and say, you know, what's going on with you, young man? Tell me what's going on with you. Ask a question and I will open up. But the judging and not knowing what's going on, Mm -hmm. assuming and let ignorance take a hold of you. So now I'm here and I'm doing my PhD and I want to be, not not want, I am living that dream as in being a neurodiverse talent and I'm advocating for other individuals, not just who have met not just who have physical disabilities, but the psychological disabilities, Mm -hmm. individuals who struggle with mental health and so on, Mm -hmm. because they are also people who can make a difference in this world. I mean, Jason, when we look at Corona and all the problems or the challenges that have been um, connected with this uh, with this virus and uh, and all the political um, 
and uh, healthcare um, obligations that affected economy and society and whatever families, uh, you know, ev the life of everybody in the world, let's say. We see a lot of mental health phenomenon coming in the, you know, that people who have to be in, in a lockdown, you know, they suffer from right. being disconnected with their families, with their friends, you know, not going out, not, not, not being able to make sport in the way they did it before, you know, not being able to do sport in the team like they did it before, not going to the yoga class, not, I don't know what, doing yoga uh, at home with uh, a YouTube video and stuff like that. So, I don't think that I'm wrong to say that at least a third of the world population is suffering something in this yes. respect. Yes. So this, I mean, I have no data and, you know, I'm not Google and I'm not whatever, uh, Bill Gates or whatever, you know. But honestly, I, I think this could be true. You know, what you just said, I mean, a base of data, but everybody's affected. Mm -hmm. Everybody's affected. I'm affected. I'm sitting here and I'm in another part of the world. Mm -hmm. I can't go out. I'm an extrovert. I like to have a conversation. I like to go out, relax sometimes, whatever. I spend, I mean, the flip side of it, I spend more time with my family. Okay. And then I get to work on projects that I have, but you still need now and then to go out. Because it actually helps with your, your satisfaction. It actually helps with your mental health. And, you know, and, and especially in the Bahamas, like there's been an increase in suicide. There's been increase in mental um, health. Mm -hmm. As in there's been so there's actually been more advocacy when it comes to that. Uh, because people don't realize that it exists. And I'm telling you because I live down here. They don't know. They do not know. Because the first thing is say, oh, that person is crazy. This person doesn't have no sense. Mm -hmm. But not knowing that they are battling mm -hmm. an illness. Mm -hmm. So we are being affected. Everybody's being affected. Now, and a lot of people don't know what to do and how to deal with it, you know. That, mm -hmm. that is the case right there. Because you know what it is every single day you go out say every weekend you go out, you, you go with your friends, you have a drink, you talk, you converse and so on. And then all of a sudden people say, Hey, you cannot go nowhere. You cannot leave your house. Mm -hmm. What are you trying to tell me? I can't leave my house, yeah. you know? So these things are, you know, and COVID has affected the social aspect, the economic aspect and the political aspect, the whole triangle aspect in all these countries. And there's issue now, but boy, when everything is over, it's now we got to recalibrate our minds. That's not going to be easy, Christian. That's not going to be easy. Mm -hmm. It seems like a, a world trauma. It is. Mm -hmm. It is. And the problem is, when is it going to over? Mm -hmm. That's what we're trying to figure out. Because okay. everybody's tired. It's been told two years. Whole two years we've been stationary. Two years stationary. Okay, Jason, let's finish with a little bit of optimism. I mean, not trying to paint things rose when, okay, when, okay. when we still don't know exactly how everything will turn out. But I mean, you mentioned that, um, that you just have to go through and that one day you'll see that you can harvest something from yes. going through something. So, right. um, so people who struggle right now with mental health problems or with, a, with additional crises, I mean, some people have mental health problems and they also right. ha suffer from cancers, from uh, cancer, from whatever, you know, heart attacks, um, plus, I don't know what, uh, unemployment, uh, you know, sometimes thing come, things come together. Uh, in crisis moments. So is there something that you can, something like a little candle that you can light for these people? As in a, something that they could utilize in order to help them? Yeah. Um, you know, there's some things I do. Um, one thing is um, 
talk with others, converse with others. Like, for example, I'm, I'm conversing with Christiane right now. And this is actually a, it's a plus, it's a positive, because I'm actually getting to, to speak with other um, individuals from other parts of the world. Do things that you could paint also. Um, I love to cook. Mm-hmm. So I try to focus my energy into to cooking. Mm-hmm. Um, definitely, you know. You did tacos today. I saw a pictures did, of right. that. <laughs> I did tacos, yes. And today is Cinco de Mayo. So I try to do something new twice out of the week. Mm-hmm. Um, and I cook with the family. And, um, you know, sometimes spend some time with nature too. You know, that's also positive. And take a swim. You know, keep yourself exercise. Mm-hmm. You know, these things help individuals you know it helps you with your your de-stress because stress is like the biggest stress is like the biggest killer which nobody i mean they talk about it but it's like it hits you in many different ways yeah and it's it's you know the stress is the ground where the virus might be able to attack I mean, like, I'm not, not a virologist and, you know, I, I'm not a specialist in these things. But, I, but, but it, seems to, it, it seems logic to me that a body which is completely stressed out is less immune than a body who is um, well nourished and, you know, relaxed. Yes. And, you know, COVID just added, just, you know, if you're stressed right now, COVID just amplified it. Because it's like, as we mentioned, as in, um, you you will have to find buffers to help you. And, you know, some people, they go out. Some people might do certain things as in drinking or so on, um, which you drink, but you got to be careful of drinking too much, you know. Mm-hmm. But, you know, there's certain things and all depends on what, what brings you peace. Mm-hmm. But the healthy ways, I mean, some healthy ways is, you know, you cook. You could go swimming, exercising is the plus, making sure you keep in contact with your friends, mm-hmm. um, find a hobby. You could do painting, rock climbing. You could do mm-hmm. other things. We could also even do shows. Mm-hmm. You could do podcasts. You know, somebody will listen to you mm-hmm. because you have a story to tell. Mm-hmm. Or you could actually write. Mm-hmm. You could write a journal. You could actually write blog. Mm-hmm. You know, these are things it's, it's out there. These are things that we can utilize. So thank you very much, Jason. Jason Styles, I'm switching into German. Vielen Dank, Jason Styles. Das war ein inspirierender Podcast und im Prinzip auch letztlich hoffnungsgebender Podcast. Es hat mich sehr gefreut, auch über die Themen Diversity und Teams und Organisationsentwicklung zu sprechen. Ich freue mich auf den nächsten interessanten Podcast Gast in zwei Wochen und freue mich darauf, dass wir uns wieder hören in zwei Wochen und wünsche euch ja oder wünsche uns, dass bis dahin, also wir sind ja in Deutschland, dass bis dahin ja der Lockdown vielleicht doch aufgehoben wird oder irgendwie gelockert wird und dass ähm, das Wetter vielleicht auch noch ein bisschen besser wird, so dass zumindest mal eine kleine äh, Erleichterung ähm, wieder in das Leben hineinkommt und wir ein bisschen Kraft finden für das, was dann ansteht. Bis dann, macht's gut, tschüss. Musik